Hi there, my name is Sue Nelson and for the next half hour or so we're going to be talking about all things drink. I haven't got any food today, just no. drink. Um, I'm joined by my fellow presenter Ollie Lloyd of Great British Chefs. Hi there, Ollie. Hey, how are you doing? Very good. And our guest today is Santiago Navarro of Goss on Wines. Hi, Santiago. Hi, good day. How are you? Very well, thanks. Good, good. Now, before we come over to you, Santiago, and your amazing product, which Ollie hasn't seen yet, but I have, so I'm, I'm keeping a secret from him right at this point in time. For some reason, and you do have a dreadful grin on your face... You said that you've got a surprise for me today in the yeah. studio, yeah. Uh, which I, you know I don't trust you as far as I could throw you. No. So what are you doing? Well, you know, occasionally on these radio programmes, we have ongoing narratives. There's a mm. conversation we start and we kind of, we talk about things. So, Your tortoise, for example. So the tortoise, mango eating in the bath. Your squirrel. You know, you squirrel. Yeah. One of the other things we've talked about is arak. Yes. Yes. And I've never tasted it. So... <gasps> We have a so. bottle of Arak. Oh, wow. So um, I, um, we, we've had come, we, we, we always love programs where there's drink involved. And um, we've been trying to get someone on the show who makes Arak. Arak is actually quite a difficult spirit. This is Sri Lankan Arak to get in the UK. Can I open it? Yeah, we're gonna, so we're going to have it with um, ginger beer and with a little bit of um, a squeeze of lime. So it's strong, right? Oh, it wow. is, Blimey. It, it is really strong. But it, it's quite, basically what we're making is equivalent of a dark and stormy. So if you want to put a little bit in there and then we'll just top it up with a bit of ginger. I've got ginger beer. So what is Arak, Ollie? So basically it's a coconut produced spirit. So essentially it's been produced all, you know, it, it's made all over. The, I mean, Arak is made all over the world, but this is a Sri Lankan Arak. It's a Mendis in particular, uh, imported in my luggage when I came back from last from Sri Lanka. Um, is that legal? I have no idea. Um and uh, essentially, yeah, just pour a small amount in, and just a small amount. It's got, yeah, 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 yeah. Cause we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cut it with a bit of yeah. And to be fair, this is this, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Um, this is uh, it's slurring our words at this. Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. You know, it's this for me is like a complete. This takes me straight to Sri Lanka, um, and I, I absolutely love this drink. Um, and so it's made from coconut, and it's basically the toddy wallers, as they're called, walk around the coconut trees and tap the, the sap, and then basically from that single product, they then make toddy. It doesn't and they, smell yeah. hugely coconut. No, it, it doesn't. It smells very spirit -y. Yeah, it's you very know, like spirit -y. a whiskey might or a brandy. Yeah. But it, it just for me... Are you supposed to squeeze the lime or no? Just leave it. It's just, it, it is just <laughs> Sri Lanka. It's just, I mean, it's not, it's not a refined drink. This is not a refined drink, right? This is a killer kind of drink. Um, wow, in fact, I'm going to wait and have my yeah. pizza. I can, I, can, uh, I can taste the ginger beer. And you get the arrack. I mean, the arrack is kind Ooh, of... Oh, she's got me at the end. Mm, it's quite... It's gone on the roof of my mouth. It's quite powerful. It's, this is not a refined spirit. It's a spirit that some people might say should stay, you know, on holiday. But for me... I'm this is, that. I quite like it. So I just thought we'd start today with just a little treat, which is a small arrack and ginger beer. You're exactly. going to try it neat now. I'm going to try it neat, <laughs> only because then I can tell really, what it's really like. It's it really says 100% like. something on the front, which to me means well, that's... 33%. Um, probably, yeah. It says 100%. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's Is it? it? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah, 100% extra neutral spirits. Oh, no, 100%, no. I think that's the neutral spirit, but actually it's 33% proof. Okay. So you're not going to die, you're all right. <laughs> no, it'd be very unfortunate to die on radio. Oh, God. Oh. Well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Anyway, well, I, I, I'm not here to sell it. I just thought... It's very nice talk, with ginger. We, we've, we've talked about it a lot, and... It's very nice with ginger beer. It's a, it's a great drink. And actually, there is this one guy I want to get on board who um, on, on the radio show who makes something called Rock... I think it's Rock Port or Rock Well. And it's like the main brand. It's a beautiful pink bottle. Um, and I just think it's a really nice... Um, it looks like the label's been eaten by a squirrel as well. Which is very appropriate. Probably has in your house. Um... But, um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is definitely not a, a high-end one. This is one that, you know, well, this morning when I was rummaging around my camera, I was like, hey, we've got a bottle of Arak, let's it's probably bring been it there in. 10 you years. Know? No, I think it's probably been there, you know. Look, it's cost 900 rupees, which is... <laughs> just, What's that, 5p? It's about 4 quid, <laughs> 3 quid. I think it's 3 quid. I think it's about 250. I do like that with ginger beer. Yeah, there you go. Mm. So it wasn't that bad a surprise, was it? No, it's a good surprise. Yeah. I'm not so sure neat. I wouldn't know in With it. ice, no. So you need a beautiful, beautiful um, malt whiskies. Uh, yeah, which you cut with some water. I don't think I do that. <laughs> that is, this is this is not a beautiful high-end malt okay, whiskey. This is a this is a mule, not a thoroughbred. <laughs> right? Okay, it's, I'm, I'm all right with that. Yeah, good. Yeah, I might yeah, have a nice few drinks for you one night yeah. with that. That's yeah, okay, not, not bad going. 
Now, can I talk about wine bottles? Yes. I'm just going to have a look at this Arak bottle, actually. Which looks like a wine bottle. Yeah, so it hasn't got a little dimple in the bottom. Is that important? Yeah, so wine bottles are generally made of glass, as you know, and uh, some wines are actually fermented in the bottle and others are bottle only after f- fermentation. The standard is 0.75 litres. That seems to be, yep. you know, every time I buy a bottle of wine, that seems to be the size. Um, but there are lots of other sizes, and, and this is the standard, and supposedly that gives you six, you know, sort of smallish glasses of wine. Now, most have what's called a punt, also known as a kick-up, and that's that sort of dimple mm-hmm. inside, you know, the bottom of a wine bottle. And nobody actually knows what that, why that's there. It's not there for any particular reason. Isn't it so you can beautifully twist the wine with one hand? No. Possibly, but, I mean, most people say it's a historical sort of remnant from the era when wine bottles, you know, were blown, By the glass hand, yeah. was blown. Anyway, so different countries uh, quite often have a shape of bottle that's theirs. And obviously now as... as, as everything's growing you know that that's not entirely true but port sherry and bordeaux varieties tend to be straight sided high shouldered and they have a pronounced punt hole in the bottom um and port and sherry bottles have a, a bulbous neck and some people say that's because they can then collect sort of any residue if you get burgundies and rhone they have very tall bottles with sloping mm. shoulders and a small punt rhine Marcel, alsace you probably know very narrow and tall mm. Um, with uh, little or no punt. And then champagne and other sparkling wines are very thick-walled and wide, and they have a really pronounced punt, as, as we all know, and sloping shoulders. So when you think about it, I hadn't really thought about it, but often particular places of wine have particular shapes of bottles. I thought on the base you were going to on holiday to Portugal in a few weeks, you'll start to talk about sort of more of the rounded varieties of bottles. What, with uh, the, um, the raffia around them? Yeah, but... Yeah, I'll, Matthias I'll, Rose. I'll yeah. also add that actually um, it is relevant to the noble grape varieties that originated in Bordeaux and Burgundy. And so a lot of um, the wines from around the world originate from a handful of grape varieties. And that's dependent whether they're from Bordeaux or Burgundy, coming back to the shapes you were mentioning. So this bottle does look very much like a Bordeaux bottle, and that bottle looks very much like a Burgundy bottle. Yeah. So you're pointing um, to the ginger beer there, Fibre Fibre correct, Tree ginger beer, correct. and this is the... Um, Arak Mendes bottle. Arak donkey. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Donkey. That was quite cool. <laughs> now, now, the reason why you're here, Santiago, and I haven't shown Ollie what we're going to show him yet, so he's done a surprise for me, I'm doing a surprise for him. Um, now, you've come up with, a, with an interesting type of wine bottle. It's a different shape altogether. Yes, I hear that. So would you like to see? I've, I've, got a, I've got a box here. I mean, I've... So I'm going to open it. This is stunning. So I've got a, I've got a box that can go through your letterbox. Absolutely three letter box, and it's about uh, just over a foot long, 30 cent, 30 40 centimeters long. So it's a bit of cardboard packaging. Open it up, look at that, Ollie. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Uh, and so, what um, Santiago's managed to do is he's managed to produce a flat bottle of wine, so it goes through your letter box. How and it's plastic, cool. that's what I was interested So it's It's recycled plastic, 100% recycled plastic. It's one of the few bottles in the world made from 100% post-consumer recycled plastic. But you're right, it is plastic. When you, when you held it up, I'm like, is it going to be glass or is it going to be plastic? No, that's lovely. It glass looks on. like glass, though, does, until you yeah. pick it up. Glass is too heavy and it shatters easily, no, so it's not an ideal both. packaging yeah. format. Having just shipped about 3,500 cookbooks using Hermes <laughs> in the UK... Um, and having a certain number of issues with, mm. you know, things being shoved through letterboxes that aren't the right size. The fact that it fits the letterbox is very important. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, so you know, when you mm. want to send somebody a present, and actually, we, I, I, I've, one of the other programs that I'm um, uh, presenter on, which is Tech Talk Show, we had, I, th- I think, Bloom and Wild, and they've managed to perfect getting flowers through your letterbox. Um, but you can't go and buy a, bo- a really nice bottle of wine for somebody and then send it to them, you know, because because it just you can't send one bottle of wine. It's just not worth it. The mm. packaging's not worth it. Um, so this is a really interesting development, don't you think? Extremely interesting. Thank you. So what's the genesis of, I mean... So, how, 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 so we came about, actually, when we were trying to um, get wine into consumers' homes to create our own B2C wine club. So my co-founder and I um, got together trying to solve the problem of single deliveries um, more frequently. Most wine clubs um, send less frequently in larger volume, but that doesn't work. Bottles. Correct, that doesn't work um, for some demographics in urban centres. People who want to control their drinking by maybe not having too much product at home. Just uh, just the, the, the dollar shave club model for wine rather than actually something that 
right. comes from time gone by. And, and we were seeing how you could get into a home when um, the drinker's not in, the, the, the home resident is not in. And we, um, we looked at many obvious packaging formats. The most obvious one is a box in that format, but with a bag inside it. So a, a, a letterbox friendly bag in box. Um, but, but people are resistant to the wine. wine in bags, aren't they? Totally, which probably, is probably unreasonably so. But which is why it was the obvious answer, and a lot of um, packaging is the obvious answer, not the right answer. Mm. And we um, looked at the problem in much greater detail, and it actually comes back to you, also your point you're making about um, deliveries with a lot of secondary packaging. We started with the primary packaging, and what most people have done is they've tried to innovate in the secondary packaging. So whether it's bubbles or, or, or uh, different types of boxes or just more packaging, um, that's where they focus. We started with the actual problem. There is um, highly functional packaging and highly emotional packaging. So there's bag in box, which is really functional and not emotional, doesn't look beautiful. And then there's round glass bottles that look beautiful, but that are not functional for e-commerce or the Amazon generation. Mm. So we brought those two together. And in a eureka moment, to be honest, we said, why don't we flatten the um, established shapes of Bordeaux and Burgundy, and why don't we make them in a material that's light enough, strong enough, and that will still resemble the glass bottles we so much love? Um, do, do you think, Oli, I mean, I, I drink a lot of wine. That's all right. You know, we also drink gin nowadays, don't we? Reasons. We like reasons. you, we like you. For professional reasons. <laughs> well, no, you're only selling um, me one bottle. Well, I, I need the two bottle pack. But we can come back to that point actually later because letterbox delivery in single units is just the tip of the iceberg of where of flat yeah. is an improvement on round. So, so do, do you think that uh, there's a lot of snobbery around in terms of wine? Do you think that that, that, um, that shape I think would wine do is so, well? I think wine is so complicated in the sense that it's... If you do the research on wine, basically says that people buy on price. They walk into a supermarket. Or I don't. Into, oh no, okay. But the general, I'm talking about the general, the yeah, general public. Of course we we spend, we're going to spend six pounds, eight pounds, ten pounds, twelve pounds a bottle. You pick your number, four pounds a bottle. If you're in France, two pounds twenty a bottle. Um, you know, and you you go in and you have a price, and you have, might have a colour, and you might know you do, do or don't like Grape, certain maybe. grapes. Maybe yeah. you know. Now, obviously, as you get more sophisticated, people will start to try different wines and stuff. So I think there is massive confusion around wine but clearly it is what people drink you know we you know if you look at the home environment people are not generally drinking beer with meals it's not social yeah. wine is a social drink uh, it brings people together around the table so um i agree um the one point that this packaging has in support of being accepted much greater we went to exceptional lengths to retain the 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 aspects mm. and the, the shape of the bordeaux bottle we will shortly release our burgundy version in flat because most of the world of wine is bottled in those two formats regardless if it comes from mm. australia new zealand chile the united states or cabernet sauvignon from napa valley in california and the us is bottled in the same bordeaux shoulders where the, the Cabernet Sauvignon grape originates mm. from, which is on the left and right bank of Bordeaux. Mm. I was just wondering, though, that... Um, I mean, I think it's a fabulous idea, um, you know, be, be, because of the, the, you know, the sort of gift market and all, all sorts of other things. And, and, and particularly, you say, the wine clubs. I don't really want 12 bottles all delivered at once, to be honest with you. Um, you know, but to have a couple of... Like a veg box... A couple of bottles. Yeah, and, and I think it's it's close. You know, once to, you know, once a week or something. It's something special to try. But I, I think one of the things that's interesting in in the UK in particular is that the the the, 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 the real estate in the UK is generally a much smaller footprint hmm. than in America. So in America, the Costco is this world. People will happily go and buy twelve bars of Dove yeah. soap or a thousand Q tips or you know six liters of of laundry detergent. We are just not that way inclined. And so, however big your house, actually, you know, the sort of the crates of wine that come through from, from the wine clubs is still quite a lot to store. Yeah. Um, so I totally get that, that point. But I also think that, you know, that ability also to pick a particular wine for a particular dish or I'm doing that and I'd like to have one of those and that whole thing, I think, is also really interesting. So I think, what's your, is your model you're working with winemakers or are you... So actually, um, we came up with the idea when wanting to be our own B2C wine club. But when we released it to the world at the end of 2016, 2017, together with a TV show, 
um, we got massive global exposure in the media and we got many large inquiries. So we said, it doesn't make sense to be our Which own. Which wine club was that? Was that one with the wine show? No, so we, we hadn't yet formulated okay. our, our, our wine club. It was a TV show called Pop-Up Startup, which was a Alibaba-funded program on CNBC International, broadcast across 90 countries. And um, they were looking at companies who had an idea and could get that product produced um, in China. We got prototypes made, very different bottle from this but slight similarities in terms of, of shape. Um, but we at that point, we were going to be a B2C wine club, which is why we even came up with the name Garçon Wines. The idea was bring me my wine, Garçon, like um, uh, at a, in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, benefit of hindsight, we, we should have picked a better name to be a B2B drinks packaging company primarily. Um, but when, when we had this media exposure and um, many companies contact us, say, oh, can we share in this um, this packaging? We said, okay, B2C a club in the UK versus global drinks packaging company, B2B, well, let's go for the latter. So we spent all of 2017 pivoting that way and creating a world-class bottle together with a very well-established um, plastic packaging company called RPC m &H Plastics, a, a, a multi-billion pound PLC who had the technical know-how to produce this bottle in recycled PET at scale, low cost, high quality, um, in the UK, which consumers um, love to be made in Britain and uh, others mm -hmm. respect the quality we can get out of here. So um, small technicalities, but fundamentally important. Yeah. You were mentioning mm -hmm. the base of the Bordeaux bottle and the uh, the, the dimple inside, etc. So this bottle too, especially, adapt, especially made base to ensure that a bottle that's slimline Doesn't is also stable. Over. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. so um, the thing is, not being at home when something's delivered, such a pain in the neck. You know, when you get those things that says your things at the local post office, which is like 15 miles away, and it's only open when I'm at work, and it's just awful. I, I've actually stopped ordering stuff that I know. Is, These are is, really good first world problems, aren't they? I know, yeah, well, yes, that's true. No, but, it, uh, is, no, no. it is true, you're right. But but I do think it's a barrier to buying something. I totally agree. But, but I think what's interesting is I don't think our real estate has yet changed to accommodate it. And I think right. that what we're going to start to see in houses and stuff is boxes where things can be dropped delivered. and things can be security, yeah. securely delivered. And, you know, the reality is we're buying more and more stuff online and we therefore need to... I mean, I think my point is it does change my buying behaviour. Of course it does. Um, of course it, it does. It also, from a business's perspective, so the, the, the research is that it does stop consumers buying online if they're concerned about um, getting a successful delivery. delivery. Yeah. If you look at it from the business's perspective, it costs a business right. around £14 for a missed delivery. Mm -hmm. Across the UK, according to IMRG's figures, it's somewhere around seven hundred eighty million pounds a year. If you look at the carbon emissions from um, yeah. missed deliveries, it's huge because you have re-deliveries to try to attempt delivery. Then on top of that, you have people jumping into their car to go to the depot. The figure I've seen is ninety thousand kilos of CO two that's unnecessary into the environment as a result of me. failed deliveries. That's made me so depressed. I'm going to have another bit of Arak. Yeah, uh, it's good. The Arak's the Arac really helping. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, but is your so is your plan then to work with wine manufacturers? So, our, our plan is correct. We're already doing that. So, we've launched the the product um, through the gifting space as a wine wholesale. So, we put um, our wine that we source into the bottles, label it, and get it out to gifting companies who at the moment really see the problem. And it's a very nice space in which to launch the format. But simultaneously. We're talking to many big wine brands, so that could be brand owners, wineries or wine clubs who want to use this format either for single or for multiple bottles. Because even if you look at 12 bottles of these in a box, you've got a 40% saving. The bottle is also 87% lighter than a traditional 500 gram why, glass why bottle. Why do we have round bottles anyway? Think about it. Why do we have glass bottles? Round bottles. Because nobody's dead to challenge the um, the established just norms the way, since the 19th century. And just that's, the way they were blown or something. Th they were blown that way, correct. They they do work well um, aesthetically looking round, but actually if you stable. place this bottle further away, you'd struggle to notice, if, if you look at a distance, um, it's not really clear that, for example, the water bottle behind you is, is round. round or flat, yeah. Mm. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, so the, we're starting off um, getting product to market to show the innovation, but um, ultimately, it's not just wine. We've also got some of the biggest spirits companies in the world talking to us and wanting to go flat because spirits through your letterbox also makes sense. Um, wanting to go flat. I, but that's I think I think it's interesting it. is that actually in the spirits world in particular, 
that for me is, you know, so my wine consumption is much more in the 6 to 12 bottle category. But in the spirits category, you know, whenever I buy a very specialist spirit online, you get them in those enormous kind of plastic sort of volume, oh, those package huge with... package things. Um, and that each one has these enormous inflatable kind of Which you bulletproof things you then have to dispose of. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, I think in the spirits world, it's even more interesting because the single usage thing of I want my bottle of Arak, I want a particular whiskey, I want a particular gin, I want a particular craft brand. I think that really aligns very, very well. I think the problem is 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 visible in both. They're about the same size, around 35 billion bottles across the globe per annum in both wines and spirits. In total, it's about a 70 billion bottle situation where most of the bottles are, are round, they're glass, they're heavy, they shatter easily. They simply weren't made for e-commerce, 21st century, distance selling, Amazon generation, want convenience, cash rich, time poor, but also care about the planet. Don't... don't 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 land me this box um, full of you know so much packaging that I've no no clue what I've done. I've just basically cut down a whole forest to deliver my bottle. You, you then feel terrible not having picked it up yourself. Yeah. And as you say here, we just post that through the letterbox, and as it says, no signature required. Correct. Which is what we're after when we buy stuff. Correct. Ensure that it's um it, it explains what it does. But as I say, as I said before, I think it's important to recognise that this goes way beyond letterbox delivery and. The, the round glass bottle is simply um, no longer fit for purpose for general consumption. So the, the spirits example you mentioned, we talk to many spirit brand owners and we recognize as an element of their portfolio, they really want the heavy fancy bottle and that will also work with wine. But that's more the celebration piece, the bit you want to put out when you have guests. But for your regular tipple, dare I say it, your daily glass of wine, you want just something that fits better in the fridge, just works better, it's more convenient for you, it's more sustainable. This is great we- in the fridge. I mean, don't you think this is proper disruption? It's proper disruption. And I think what's interesting, though, is that packaging is also part of branding. Yeah. And I can see how, you know, if I am if I was manufacturing a 90, 100 pound bottle of whiskey, I do not want a bottle that other people have. I want something no, that's no. different. But I don't and think that's, that's not what this is targeting. Uh, yeah, this is targeting, I absolutely, I think, is targeting the mass market everyday stuff. I think that's completely correct. And mm. I think you're absolutely right. It's totally a space for, for disruption and innovation in this area. It's really interesting. It's, it's also showing a good use for the plastic that's out there and it's causing us mm. so much concern. So I call it the, let's call it the post Blue Planet 2 um, panic um, of, of plastic packaging that's littering our environment. If we freak out and run away from plastic packaging, it'll become a really big litter mess because nobody will want to fuel and, and fund it. And what we need is don't rely on governments to go out and fish this product out of our oceans. Actually, create a value as we're doing by creating a product that's 100% post-consumer create, recycled. Create a market. Then right. entrepreneurs will go out there rather than make bottles. And other entrepreneurs like me will pay for vessels to go out and fish this hundreds of millions of floating PT that's sitting in our oceans, collect it and sell it back to others. But your point also about, I think, about transportation is also particularly interesting, which is, are we spending enough time thinking about how do you pack as much product into space. the square footage of your pallet in order to reduce the cost of, of, of you know, moving stuff around? Because we all know that stuff's moving all over, the, you know, the country, you know, and actually if you can reduce the space in this, I mean, I think there's an argument to say it goes beyond wine, it goes into, you know, all the other liquids. Mm, you know, why, why not water? Milk. You know, w- you know water bottles and yeah, we, milk. And- we fit 22 boxes on a level on a pallet of 12 and um, 4 high. We don't stack too high at the moment. And um, we've got 88 boxes of 12 bottles, so that's 1,056 bottles on a pallet. You could also double stack, in, st- stack into a trailer. And in fact, in the United States, we've had inquiries relating to being simply more ef- effective and, and cost-effective um, in road haulage because they, they're moving um, wine at exceptionally long distance. Most wine is grown in either Cal- um, California, Oregon, or New York, and then it's moved around the country. Um, they, 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 have, they have restrictions on weight and on space and, and, and all these things, and, and they're, they're not maximizing the... Um, the supply chain, basically, mm-hmm. because because once again, um, we've accepted that there's two ways to be, either the highly emotional, beautiful round glass bottle or the highly functional, but frankly, ugly black in box. And, and nobody's tried to bridge the two. And what we've tried to do is have a bottle that has emotional benefits and looks beautiful on the dining table and has the functional benefits of bag in box, that it stacks easier, it's lighter, it doesn't break as easily. 
And so um, it's bridging those two things, recognizing that we want functional probably in the back of our brain, but what makes us happy is the emotional. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, I sort of blow my mind a little bit. It's lovely. Could be there, I reckon. Thank you. So no. where, where where will we first see this on the market in the UK? Who who are the brands that are most So it likely? launched with Bloom and Wild, actually. Thank you for mentioning them before. They were the pioneers in letterbox flowers. And when we said we'd pivot to B2B and we'd go to market um, as uh, with the consumer gifting space, we said our ideal partner to go to market with would be Bloom and Wild. They've done such a phenomenal job. And they're great guys. Uh, yeah, they are great guys. And they're really um, good at quality and they're, they're really good at back-end systems, which is what you have to be for delivery. And they're good at understanding a startup, which yeah. you need when you you are a startup, you need to work with somebody who can understand that in the short term, you may have a slight delay or there may be teething problems, N- not to do with quality, normally do with time. Uh, and they, they you yeah, know, purely understand through them with you. Correct, you know, exactly, correct, exactly, exactly. So, so Bloom and Wine, Bloom are, doing sell the wine product. are doing yeah. wine delivery and those are your branded wines. So it's actually, we've chosen as as per this bottle of rosé that, that I've brought here to show you, the bottle is, the wine is unbranded. So we've chosen also on the box, you'll notice um, there is no name. There's no name of ours anywhere. There's just a small mention on the back, which is a legal requirement to say who sourced the product. Um, but other than that, it's um, a brand agnostic product so that it can work as well on Bloom and Wild as it can work on someone else's site. So someone um, else can put their brand on it. Correct. We're also That's currently um, stocked on a couple of other sites. So Next Flowers is another uh, another stockist that um, stocks the product, um, gifted to you. Um, we've got some other products and um, projects going live shortly. So um, it's interesting, all interesting mm, stuff. Interesting. So you can go on to, I think it's gutsonwines.com. You yeah. should be able to find out all about it there. Really Unfortunately, it's spelled um, difficultly compared to how it says garconwines.com. Garcon. Um, if anybody's on French at school, you should know how to spell that. But it'll be on our website anyway, and there'll be a thank link. You. Of course, there will. Thank you. So thank you very much, Santiago Navarro of Garcon Wines. Interesting. Very That's interesting. got my entrepreneurial brain going a bit. Yeah, there's so a... many sort of ways in which that can go. I it think. means we can stack more wine at home in our wine cupboard. Yeah, it's good that. And unfortunately, it's good, over. yeah. It's mm, quite a good idea. So you've been listening to the Food Talk Show, uh, which is syndicated to radio stations across the UK and further afield, as well as being available on Podbean, iTunes, podcast app and Spotify. Thank you to my fellow presenter, Ollie Lloyd, who has served up my first ever tasting of Arak. You're Thank welcome. Thank you for that. I might have a little sip of that in a minute. There we go. A bit more. That was good. But with ginger beer, didn't like it on its own. Um, and if you if you know anybody um, who's doing anything groundbreaking in the food sector, please get in touch with us via Twitter on at Food Talk Show. Or if you want to listen to any of our 100 podcasts, go to foodtalk.co.uk or via Great British Chefs, where you can also find about oh, 4 million different recipes as well. Yeah, if you, if you to keep you entertained, bored. to go with that wine. Yeah, to go with the wine. So I uh, hope you have a good week. I'm going to have a little bit more, Eric. Um, goodbye. <laughs>